Okay, in this video, I'm going to do some review on supply and demand math type questions. Our first question. In a market, the demand and supply are given by the following. Here is our market demand, and this last equation is the market supply. What is the equilibrium price and quantity? We're going to set the quantity demanded equal to quantity supplied. 50 minus 2p equals minus 10 plus p. And now we're going to solve for p or the price. Adding 10 to both sides, we'll get 60. Adding 2p to both sides, we'll get 3p. So 3p equals 60. Dividing through by 3, the equilibrium price is $20. To get the equilibrium, to get the equilibrium quantity, plug this $20 back into either the demand or supply equation. Doing that, we see we have an equilibrium quantity of 10 units, 50 minus 40. What happens in the market at a price of $15? You notice this $15 is less than the equilibrium price, so we should get a shortage. So there, there's going to be a shortage of 15 units at this price. The quantity demanded will equal 20 at $15. Plugging $15 into the demand equation, 50 minus 30 is 20. And the quantity supplied will only be 5, so plugging $15 into the supply equation, minus 10 plus 15 is 5. So we do have excess demand, quantity demanded exceeds quantity supplied here by 15 units, so we have a shortage. What is the elasticity of demand at equilibrium? So we need to take the derivative of the demand equation with respect to price. That's this right here, this dq divided by dp. So taking the derivative of that, we get minus 2. And then we're going to evaluate this elasticity at the equilibrium price, which is 20. P is 20, an equilibrium quantity of 10 for Q. So we get minus 40 divided by 10, or minus 4 for the price elasticity of demand. Question 2. The market demand is given by Q equals the following. This is a nonlinear demand. What happens if price increases by 1%? The quantity demanded is expected to decrease by 1.58% which is just the exponent on the price term. This demand equation is a constant elasticity of demand. Question three. In a market, the demand and supply are given by the following. Suppose the government places a $4 per unit tax in this market. Solve for the price buyers pay and sellers receive. All net of taxes. So first thing we note here is that when we have a tax in a the market, there's going to be a difference between what the price that buyers pay, P, P subscript B, and the price that sellers receive, P subscript S. So the tax, uh, tax creates a wedge here between what buyers pay and sellers receive. Next thing here we can do is we can assume this tax is placed on sellers. And so net of taxes here, sellers are going to receive some money from buyers here, and then the sellers are going to submit a tax to the government, so we're going to subtract out that tax, which in our case is $4. So making a substitution where we have P subscript S, we're going to replace that with P subscript B minus 4. And now simplifying our market supply, we get the following equation. We're going to set the demand equation now equal to the new market supply once we incorporate the taxes. And we're going to solve this for the price that buyers pay, P subscript B. Adding 14 to both sides gets us 64. Adding 2P to both sides gives us 3P. Dividing through by 3, the price that buyers pay in the face of the tax is $21.33. This is a little bit more than what buyers were paying without the tax. Without the tax, we saw in question 1, buyers were only paying $20. As for sellers, sellers receive this $21.33 from buyers, but then submit the tax to the government, leaving sellers net of $17.33. In terms of the equilibrium quantity, we can take this $21.33 and just plug it into the supply equation down here to get an equilibrium quantity of 7.33 units. Question four, market demand for good X is given by the following. 
we want to calculate the following, the price elasticity of demand, the cross price elasticity of demand, and income elasticity of demand. We're going to let the price of good X equal $10, the price of the related good equal $5, and the consumer's income here in the market uh, is going to be 50 making all our substitutions into the demand for good X, all of these prices. We see that the, dem the quantity demanded here at these values is 16 units. To get the price elasticity of demand, we take the partial derivative of this demand equation with respect to P subscript X. We just get back the coefficient on the P subscript X term, which is minus 1. Then we're multiplying that by the price of good X, which we're told is 10 and the quantity that we just solved for, which is 16. So minus 10 divided by 16 gives us this answer. As for the cross price elasticity of demand, we're taking the partial derivative of the demand equation, this time with respect to P subscript Y. We get back the coefficient on that term, or 0 0.2. Okay, so that's our partial derivative result, the 0 0.2. And then we're going to multiply it by the price of good Y, which we're told is 5 and the quantity that we solved for 16, and we get this answer. And finally, to get the income elasticity of demand, take another partial derivative, but this time with respect to income, we get back the coefficient on the income term here of 0 0.1, multiply that by the value of income 50, and divide it through by the quantity of 16, and that is our income elasticity of demand. Okay, that's it.